All right, Robert, you ready for my, one of my favorite sounds in the world? Let's hear it. Let's do it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, stop. Okay, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody to Wino Wednesday. I'm Gina. I'm Robbie G, the professor. The professor, <laughs> yes. And we are here today to celebrate the varietal Nebbiolo from Italia. So I guess we should say to everyone, buongiorno or actually buonasera. Y- yes. Right? Because it is after five. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean good evening? It does mean good evening. Good evening, good evening. professor. How do you good do? Evening. Good to be here. Yeah, good to be here. Yeah. It's How very, are you doing? It's very good. Yeah. Hungry for some cheese? I, I am hungry. Some formaggio? Yeah, I had a light lunch and I've been doing running around all day, so my tummy's growling. Is I'm it? Ready okay. To go. Are huh? you going to share? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> this plate's usually made for two, but when Rob's around, it's kind of more made for one. <laughs> well, you know. Come on. That's about, that's about right for me. It about is. Well, welcome, everybody. If you are new to Wino Wednesday, um, so happy to have you. Uh, this is just where we decided um, last year that every other Wednesday we're going to share a varietal of wine and we're going to talk about what cheeses that we just absolutely love with that wine. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. it's wine, sometimes it's a cocktail, sometimes yeah. it's spirits, sometimes maybe mm-hmm. it's beer. I yeah, mean, exactly. Beverages. But we're going back to the to the true wino Wednesday. Yeah, and we're going to stick some wine. And I think for the next couple of months we're doing wines mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Every, yeah. Yeah, every other Wednesday. It's very cool. There's so many varietals. Yeah. And we're just going to go through all of them before we end this. Yeah, and <laughs> right? we'll switch yeah. off. We're, we've been switching off. White, red, white, red, mm-hmm. uh, bubbles, but yeah. we've got uh, a red today. Exactly, we do. Italian red, which I'm very excited about because I am I think Italian wines are hard to find good ones. Yeah. And um, I want to learn more on how to do that. And Rob himself was on a tour through the northern Italian wine country and kind of learned a lot more than I know. So I'm anxious to hear what you have to say about Nebbiolo. Ne- so yeah, Nebbiolo, mm-hmm. and it's, uh, it is definitely most uh, connected to, most associated with a region called Piedmont. It is not, um, I mean, there are, there is Nebbiolo, the, the grape Nebbiolo is grown in, in other places, it's grown in California, but it's definitely most associated with Piedmont, mm-hmm. and Piedmont is in the north, it's, um, the biggest city is Turin, mm-hmm. and uh, so it's right next to Lombardy up there, yeah, and it's, um, yeah, it actually means foot of the mountain, so it's right there in the, kind of, a lot of it is in the foothills as you're going up into the Alps, it borders Switzerland, and, yeah. and um, can tell you it's positively gorgeous. magical. Yeah. Yeah. It, absolutely gorgeous and they have mm-hmm. like the train that goes from northern Italy through the Alps in into Switzerland it's mm-hmm. uh, just insanely beautiful that part of the world yeah um, and uh, the the region is really rich with with food in, in general um, so it's it's not just wine there's um, truffles come from there white truffles which are the Alba. <laughs> the, the other mm-hmm. it's also known as the Alba truffle mm-hmm. um, there is a uh, hazelnuts they make a ton of hazelnuts mm-hmm. there <laughs> Lots of charcuterie. Oh, very nice. Very What'd you nice. think, Rob? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm useful for something. I might not have all the facts, but... <laughs> Great cheeses. And so we have some cheeses from Piedmont and also from neighboring Lombardy, which is where uh, which is where Milan is. And we'll get to the cheeses in a moment. But more about the wine. Um, the So there's a couple of... Uh, names that you will see on bottles. One is Barolo, mm-hmm. and another is Barbaresco. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Th- those are places. Okay. And is it a grape too? No, the grape mm-hmm. is Nebbiolo. See, and I always thought Barolo was a grape. Yeah. So, so mm-hmm. like, so Barolo is a little town. Um, it's a little commune, and it's in the province of Cuneo. So is Barbaresco. Barbaresco is a little bit more uh, lenient on what can go into their wines. Barolo, though, is can only be Nebbiolo, 100% ne- Nebbiolo grape. Hmm. And, uh, so do you know the what, so does Barolo, it's a Nebbiolo grape, mm-hmm. but does it, it has to come from Barolo? Is that what makes it a Barolo? Why is this not a Barolo? Uh, well, Bar- the Barolos come from a couple of towns mm-hmm. right around there. Okay. Maybe it, yeah. there's a handful of towns, um, but it has to be 100% um, Nebbiolo. Okay. And, um, but then it's a very, very complex grape. So a young Nebbiolo is, I mean, it, it will wreck your palate. It is so tannic. The young ones are so tannic that they tend to really benefit from um, from age. And so they're actually aged a minimum of 36 months. That's wow. That's three years. I had to do some quick math. Well done. Professor. Three years. <laughs> um, and 18 of those months are, yeah. are on wood, okay. on oak. 
And so, as I said, really young, they're almost like unpalatable mm-hmm. because they're it's so they're so chewy and yeah. tannic. Um, but with age, these are wines that get described. You hear descriptors like like tar, tobacco, okay. um, uh, truffle, which is you know that's part of that's the the terroir. Um, but also a lot of dark fruit. These, so these are, you know. Very different from some of the wines that we've talked about. Very different from a from a Beaujolais or from right. a um, you know from a Sangiovese, like the Chiantis, which are more table wines. Exactly, and Pinot Noir. Drunk, and yeah, me, Pinot Noir. Yes. Yeah. So these are uh, think of think of it more as like a Bordeaux or like a, you know a Cab or a, a, yeah something like and that. Exactly, and that's why you are, I think you you can't find a young Barolo, and those aren't no. great. You want them to be the older. I knew that. Um, but it's nice that we have the choice of Nebbiolo from the surrounding area. Mm-hmm. That's really good. Yeah, and so some yeah. of the other grapes that mm-hmm. come from from that area are uh, Moscato, and mm-hmm. like Asti is yeah. in Piedmont. Um, Asti Spumanti. Yeah, yeah that's like Spumanti. the first Italian wine I probably ever had. Right, and and so we always <laughs> have the um, was from Martini. Is that the Martini, Martini Rossi? Rossi? Yeah, right. <laughs> that's right. Oh my god, you still see those. You still do. Yep, they're actually not bad. But um, uh-huh. that's uh-huh. named for the little town of Asti, and uh-huh. Asti is a sister city to Alba, and Alba is known for white truffles, and it's, it's really close by, yeah. um, and it's a gorgeous little town. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, And also, can I just jump in, uh-huh. close by to Bra, which is the um, epicenter of slow foods. Yeah. So you can understand why this whole region, with all the foods we mentioned, the grapes we talk about, the varietals, all this jazz, how so the slow foods movement could have started there. Yeah, the yeah. slow food movement started in the in the early 80s mm-hmm. in a town called Bra, B-R-A. Just like it sounds. Just like it sounds. And mm-hmm. uh, there is, there's just an a, a amazing history, like I said, you know, with, with all the, the, the agricultural food products that come from there. But the, the slow food movement started because uh, at McDonald's, tried to move into the town. No, into the little town of Bra? Yeah. That would have ruined that little town. And so they did not want fast food. Yeah. They 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 want the opposite route, which is where the name slow food comes from. It's their answer to fast food. Okay. And so they they peacefully protested. That's another word of 2020. <laughs> they peacefully <laughs> oh protested. Let's not go there. Actually, in 2021 too. Um, the 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 McDonald's and they started a movement and uh, and we still of course um, see the the result of that today here in San Diego. I mean that's um, a, a lot of restaurants and uh, a lot of farms and uh, live by that slow food. Uh, where does your food come from? Be connected to the food. It's you know you, when you when you go to the grocery store, maybe you don't realize that food doesn't uh, come out of the ground in a nice you know plastic wrapping and um, all, <laughs> all nicely sliced. <laughs> exactly. For you. Chicken McNuggets. Don't yeah. Don't come in. Chicken don't... doesn't typically come in a McNugget <laughs> form, a nugget form, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's a uh, Barolos is a DOCG, um, and then Barbaresco. Um, I mentioned a couple of the, the other grapes that come from there. Um, Dolcetto, uh, Moscato, and Barbara is another grape oh, that yeah. comes from the mm-hmm. area. And is it Barbera? Is it Barbara? Bar- Barbera? Oh, Barbera. I, wasn't, Barbera. I think it's Barbera. I don't know. Barbera. Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, so the, the Barolos that get aged five plus years are called Reserva. And those are the really, uh, the really old ones and, and usually the ones that have a higher price tag as well. Um, okay. So are well, you I need to it? pour. I'm sitting here chatting. And I got to tell you, um, if you have a YouTube account, I'm happy to try to field questions via the chat feature of YouTube. Um, and if you don't, um, I'll, we're going to try to answer any questions that get asked. <laughs> so hopefully we will answer your question. Okay. So I am going to pour because Nebbiolo. I don't know, again, enough about Italian wines. Look and I'm point. going to learn. This is very light. This looks like just... I could probably drink the whole thing <laughs> type of uh, wine, but I like the color. It's very ruby e. So one um, of the just things they say they say about the body is that there's a lot of structure. Salut. Lots and lots of structure. The um, the color is interesting too. Oh, it's very tart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The color is interesting. The, this is tart to me. It's like a red Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. Very tart. Mm-hmm. And what so what happens with uh, with age is it'll take on like a brick or like a rust 
color, almost like orangey hue to it as it ages. Okay. Which is also really yeah. unique. And I noticed, okay, I do know that because we had been to Northern Italy and visited Amarone's, a famous, mm -hmm. you know, grape and everything there. Yeah. And they talked a little bit about that rust color and, mm -hmm. and with the aging and how that comes about. So that one's really known for it. You're saying these can have that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. The, mm -hmm. So the, the Nebbiolo, as it ages, um, we we do take, uh, so when, when we, at Venissimo, we started doing cheese cheese tours, cheese trips, and... Benny voyages. Benny voyages, we mm -hmm. call them. And we, I, the first one was in 2017 or 2018. Yeah, that was your, and you, you went, you, you yeah. launched it. I was lucky enough to, to go on the first yeah. one, but we, um, the, starting, I, I'm going to go back even, probably to 2012, 2013. Mm -hmm. um, so Gina is, t for those of you who, who maybe don't know um, our story, Gina's the, the owner of Venissimo. She, she founded the company in, in 2004, January. Yes. <laughs> <gasps> January 17th. January, so the Do anniversary you know is coming is? up. It's coming up. Whoa. Whoa. The, uh, so, and then I came in in 2008 in May. You and did. The company was still very pretty young at that point. And I remember um, Gina kind of instilled this idea in me that if you, uh, if you think it, you can do it. If you dream it, you can yeah. do it. And I was like, well, we'll, we'll see about that because I got some big dreams. <laughs> yes, right? You do. <laughs> you did. And if I can preface this to say, because it's because I'm madly in love in the business sense way with Richard Branson. You Remember? Yeah, I was gonna, you yeah. knew I was going to say that. And his screw it, just do it mm -hmm. uh, and give everything a try and say yes often and yeah. see what happens. And so, yeah. Well, so this all yeah. started with the, the growth of the company turned, it, it went from, you know, Mission Hills to then an, another shop in Del Mar. And then there was one in life. So the company started growing and opportunities started growing. And Gina said, hey, would you like to be the lead of, of our education program? And I'm like, sure, okay. And I, um, I had been working a lot. You know, I would clock out and I would go home and I would make outlines and study cheese. And and eventually the um, the opportunity came about. And I had I had all of these notes and I and and I finally got to to use them. And, and we so we put some classes on the website and people bought them. Yeah. And so we that meant we had to yeah. I had to show up and now and teach, teach them. a class. Oh my gosh, the first class. Yeah. Remember? Yes. Ah, our shop downtown. But what was so cool about for me what was so cool about that experience was I I out of, you know, just out of my head came up with an outline and in sort of a, in a format and I was able to get up there and start mm -hmm. telling stories and I was I was able to to build this whole program of education and you know, now we have 50, 75 different presentations that we do yeah. and it's, it's really easy, but it was really fun to build that really out of nothing. I mean, mm -hmm. it was, it was literally just out of reading books, taking notes and tasting, and tasting, <laughs> traveling. And, um, so that led to, um, going, going to Europe and, you know, first we, the first few trips we, we did, you know, not with customers, but I thought one day it would be really cool to bring customers to to Europe, and um, so the the, the idea w w was. Um, when was did that? Yeah, mull in your head right then. You think even back then when you started teaching. When we think, when we started teaching, yeah. and I and I went on a couple of trips to, to Europe, and and I would mm -hmm. visit cheesemakers, and I would I would set up an appointment like a fifteen minute appointment, and that turned into a five hour appointment. <laughs> And meals with their family, and wine and cheese. And, and I thought, meals. how cool would it be if we can yeah. put together some kind of um, trip program, some kind of cheese tour? There's wine tours. Why not cheese tours to Europe? And so I, so I basically built my what would be my dream itinerary. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, I don't know how or when or how this is going to happen, but uh, I was doing a class in the Del Mar shop one night, mm -hmm. and I had. I waited until oh everybody yeah. was a little buzzed, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I said, "Oh, you know, someday we'd like to do these cheese trips." And it turned out that there was a, a, somebody who had a travel company that was in the audience, and they and they followed up and Isn't they that said, "Crazy, yeah, we'd like to partner with you on this." And we're based in in northern Italy, mm -hmm. in, in Turin, actually. Mm -hmm. And so we we met, and I said, "Hey, this is our dream yeah. trip: Piedmont." Um, Parma yes. and Tuscany oh. these three places don't I look like a Tuscany girl tonight <laughs> yeah. yeah that was my whole goal <laughs> <laughs> well too and, and so we, we made it happen yeah and uh, it took a few years 
because we had to promote it and we had to sure how do you build an itinerary and how do you do it from afar and yeah we had to figure exactly. out all the logistics and mm-hmm. all the, the legal stuff that goes with it and and uh, but but it ended up happening so dream it and you can do it we did it and I yeah and there was um there was a moment I remember I remember getting there and it the, the night before I remember being so nervous because people are paying a lot of money and I have to go it's two weeks where I have to be on I can't ever like I'm, I'm leading this group and I have to just be be ready if there's a catastrophe or, or an issue like I got to figure out how to how to handle it then and there <laughs> no 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 pressure but um, there was a moment maybe two or three days into the trip where we had finished we had finished for the day we had finished all the sightseeing for the day and everybody retired to their rooms and it was maybe five or six o'clock at night and I for the first time and the whole trip I, I had a moment to myself and and I got to my room and I was hungry so I decided to just take a walk find a restaurant and I'm walking in this gorgeous little town called Lamora which is overlooking Barolo basically in these rolling hills in northern Italy and it hit me it like it hit me at this moment I was like I, I, holy shit <laughs> holy watch your mouth but holy shit we did it and, and, and we're here and yeah. uh, and I just uh, I call that my moment in Lamora. Your moment of Lamora in Lamora. <laughs> and uh, yeah. and I just sat there and I'm like, I can't believe that this is yeah. that this happened. I'm here. You took the this group on this tour, mm-hmm. and now these people have become your lifelong friends. Isn't it like so? Isn't that interesting? So right? the, the you people, do things with the whole group. The still. people that came on the first trip, they mm-hmm. came on another trip later. We we get together for dinners a couple times yeah. a year. But yeah, yeah, they're they're friends now. Yeah, and, uh, isn't that it's great? So neat. That's so good. Just bringing the world together. And that's what I think the tastings do that, well, when they get back into public mm-hmm. <laughs> tastings, that will do to bring them together. But the tours, for sure. Um, shared experiences. Yeah. Shared experiences, yeah. And, and that's what the that's what the that's classes right. are all about. And mm-hmm. so now we, we have stories together. We have uh, yeah. we have history. You exactly. Know? What next? We can, we gossip, you know. We're going to do a tasting good. on the exploratory voyages of Virgin Galactic. Will be the cheese purveyor. <laughs> okay, no. Speaking of cheese, oh, Bob, wait, really quick, we better tell everybody what they have because, like, I'm like, okay, now I'm getting very hungry, and um, we have to say hi to the regulars. Jason and Carol are on, and we were talking about the Veni tours. Mm-hmm. What about we need to do? You know what we have to add to the next 2022 England? Italy tour? No, mm. Vespa ride, scooter ah, riding yes. through. Yeah, because don't you think? Yeah. Well, yes, Carol. We have so we have uh, northern Italy. We have Sicily. We have southern France. We have the Alps, but uh, yeah, we can we can do some scooter some scootering uh, in there. We can we can do uh, England. We can do other parts of France. Okay. So many ideas. Okay. But we have a new new John is with us and wants to know what cheese do we start with? What cheese? What cheese? Start so with. Do tell everyone, please, Rob. Start with the Latour, and the Latour is the softy right here. Um, so dig into that one. The order is a little bit different than what is on your sticker on your on your plastic lid. The Latour is the one that looks, I guess, most like a brie. It's got a little natural um, rind. Bloomy, isn't it? It's, it's a bloomy. bloomy. I was going to say moldy. I didn't want to. I want to freak you out. But it's a natural bloomy rind, and it's the softest cheese of the bunch. Um, the second cheese. Do you want to? Oh yeah, you want me to show them? Mm-hmm. Which one do you want to do? Too? Yeah, the second one oh. is going to be the um, Testin Barolo. Which Gina will show you. Oh, look at this, you guys. The Testun Barolo. So Barolo, because in honor of the Nebbiolo, which is the Barolo grape. Uh, this cheese is dipped, it's washed in Barolo must. It's the grape must. And if you don't know what must is, that's the skins and stems left over in the winemaking process. It's called must. And so they decided, you know, let's not waste the must. Let's bury our cheese in it and see what happens, and you get something like Testun Barolo. Yeah. You might even have some of the must on your piece, on the plate, so you can nibble on that too and see what that tastes like. It's gonna be really tannic and bitter. I would that. recommend tasting the rind <laughs> on that one. Yeah, for sure. And for we, sure. Do, we, we try to taste in order. The order was tricky on this one, because we have a blue and then a truffle cheese next, so we're gonna do the blue for the, mm-hmm. the third one. Kind of self-explanatory which one that is, but I'm gonna try to scoop some up. And it's here. a really soft blue. This is Gorgonzola Dolce. Dolce means sweet. And uh, it's it's a for a blue, it's about as mild mm-hmm. a blue as, as you can you can get. Mm-hmm. It is. Uh, we'll talk about it, but it's from Lombardy. It's a classic, of course. Mm-hmm. And then the fourth cheese is going to be the Boschetto. 
Yep, and you're gonna see little flecks in there, and do tell what the flecks in there are. The little black flecks are truffle, and uh, it's white truffle, even though they are black in color. Uh, Smell that one. You should get a you should get a whip of truffle. The uh, the I cheese. I could be a truffle dog or pig. We'll get into that too. <laughs> the cheese itself is from uh, is from Florence, so it's the cheese Tuscan. is made in yeah mm -hmm. Tuscany, but the truffles come from northern Italy mm -hmm. um, because that's where the truffles come truffles from. Truffles come from, and we talked about a little bit about hazelnuts. Yeah, hazelnuts, or uh, are they also called filberts? I think they are filberts, yeah. and we call them hazelnuts. But I tell you, they're so popular. My mom's from Austria, and her town is on the Italian border, so mm -hmm. she's very southern Austria. Um, and hazelnuts were big there too. And mm -hmm. I, people here don't use the hazelnut as much or see them mm -hmm. as much, but they're, they're freaking everywhere and they're, they're really good. They have a huge Nutella factory right there. I'm serious. Have you been to it? We drove by it. Oh. So we saw it, but you can smell can it. Can you smell it? Yeah, you can totally smell it. <laughs> a Nutella factory. And they have, we, we took uh, on our tour, we go to a hazelnut farm oh, and we nice. just have, of course we, we do a tour, but then they do a whole meal of all hazelnut things. There was a hazelnut pasta and then a bunch of hazelnut desserts. It was one of the best meals I've ever had, actually. Um, and then mm -hmm. we have other accoutrement. Yes. Um, this the little <gasps> jam there, or not jam, it's a, <laughs> what is it? It's a, Okay, <laughs> the color we understand is not appealing. <laughs> it's army green. It's very army green. That's forest, a better word for it. We're not going to say what you said earlier. Okay, it's forest <laughs> green color. Um, you guys, this is pistachio cream, also known as pistachiosa. Mm. Um, it's like peanut butter made of pistachios. Mm. Pistachio butter. I mean, it really Sweet, truly is delicious. You know, so delicious. It's that, Sicilian, but we it's Italian, so we had to put it on here because it's so yummy. That's fun. I try mm -hmm. that. If you have any leftover, <laughs> try it on ice cream. Oh, it'd be so good. Like if you have a, any like vanilla mm -hmm. Haagen Dazs vanilla, mm -hmm. vanilla or something, it'd be perfect. But mm. really anything. Then there's, uh, of course, there's all kinds of other things. There's dried yeah. fruit, rosemary, there's uh, grapes on there. And as we always Crackers. said in previous episodes, do try a little piece of the rosemary with the cheeses because they're really good, especially, I think, with the Latour. Mm. And we have a question for you, Professor, from Ryan. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ryan. Um, how the Latour's made because mm -hmm. the texture is so interesting on yeah. it with that ripening. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's start with the Latour. So the Latour comes from, uh, from Piedmont. It's, it's made by a company called Alta Langa, and the, their, the region itself is called the Lange. Um, and the Lange is, it refers to kind of like a hilly area um, just east of, uh, of, of Alba. So there's a ton of agriculture there. there, there's wine there. It's very foggy, like the fog rolls in over the hills, and the, the word Nebbiolo, I forgot to mention, comes from the word fog. Ne Nebbiolo oh, means fog. Oh, fog, okay. And nice. that, so like it's, that. it's the, it's foggy, you know, the, the, the fog rolls in over the hills, and there's also what looks like a layer of fog that kind of develops on the, on the grape as it matures as oh, well. Wow. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen like that kind of foggy mm -hmm. grape? That's I didn't know that they called it fog. Yeah. So that's interesting. So they, mm -hmm. it, the name is refer, refers to that. The, so the cheese is a soft ripened mixed milk. It is really unique um, because it's made with goat, sheep, and cow's milk, the Latour. Um, it is um, soft ripen means that as it ages, as it ripens, another word for aging, it will get softer. So this one is um, th this one is pretty ripe right now because it's, it's very soft. It um, it does age, and, and one one indicator of it being aged is that it has a rind. The rind will develop during the aging process. It's not aged for very long. It's maybe. A few weeks, four, four to six weeks mm -hmm. or so, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, Comes in a little cupcake. Yeah, it looks like a little <laughs> cupcake. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, but the, so the but the style there there's a style that comes from there, and they're called robiolas. And a robiola is um, to to make it to simplify it, it's sort of like a the Italian version of a brie. They're softer cheeses. Now, how do soft to get to to Ryan's question? How do soft cheeses get made? Well, it's all about how they treat the curd. Milk, or sorry, cheese starts as, as milk. And the first thing they do to milk is they turn that milk into solid and liquid, which are called curds and whey. The cheese maker works with the curd to create whatever cheese they're gonna make. Um, in this case, it's a softer cheese. So they'll, they will, um, they'll curdle it and they'll, they'll cut the curd into bigger pieces because the, the bigger the piece of curd, the more moisture is left into, in the, in that the curd. piece. I kind of think if you know flan. Yeah, it's similar it, to that. Think of a piece of flan. They mm -hmm. keep the curd in just that big piece. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a way to look at it. 
if mm-hmm. you um, so if you ever see or I, I'll compare it to camembert or brie some of the French soft cheeses they will take uh, and this cheese as well they'll take that curd they'll really kind of gently ladle they'll, they'll pull that curd out and they'll gently ladle it into a form mm-hmm. um, and it's the form is just the, what the shape of the cheese is going to end up being yeah. and then they'll, they'll, they'll ladle two or three more curds on top of the, the bottom curd and the little forms will have these holes in it and, and then it'll, usually they do it on a straw mat and so it can drain the whole time as well and the, the curd that they put on top very gently will slowly yeah, push down the curd on the bottom and it'll end up in this little cupcake, mm-hmm. um, you know, form. <laughs> Which is hence how the Latour gets its shape and form. And, yeah, isn't and that then, interesting? And then yeah. the, the next step is they'll, they'll, they'll put it into another room. It'll get salted, um, but that room will um, will inoculate the cheese with, with, with the rind that they want to grow. Yeah. So it's um, that's where know, the molds come in, right? Yeah. yeah. And free, so free form. <laughs> they'll con- they'll molds, control yeah. all that. So after maybe two or three days, you'll have the, the, the rind will bloom, it will flower, and you can kind of see it. Yeah. You can even, like, if you touch it, your yeah. fingerprint will show on it Isn't when it it's crazy? really young. It's really, look at this. Yes, yeah, kind of springy. It's almost moussey, this one, Rob. Yeah. I mean, you haven't tried it yet. The texture's like a mousse. It's a cheese mousse. But to me, it's really goaty. And I got to say, I like it. It's tart because goat cheeses tend to be. I, I get mostly goat when I taste this every time. And to me, it's good with the Nebbiolo because it is also tart. Mm-hmm. So they're very complementary together. Um, we have a question. So our friend George said the, the pistachio cream is repulsive. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a better word than what Robbie used. In, a, in appearance? Or? In appearance. But no, the flavor is slightly sweet. And Carol, you asked how this pistachio cream is made, just so you know. And try it with the Latour, everybody, because it is fabulous. But pistachio cream, all they do is blend the pistachios, just like peanut butter, a smidge of olive oil. That's what's giving that that total velvet finish, mm. is, is actually blending it with a little olive oil. So you could try this yourself if you have just a nice uh, blender, uh, Vitamixy type thing. You could try to make pistachio cream. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the uh, olive oil is key to keep it really, really smooth. I wonder if they can do something to give it a nicer look, nicer color. Some of them are brighter green, but then I'm kind of thinking that's not a natural color, so I'm not sure how they're getting that brighter (laughs) green. So this is a natural, natural pistachio, so I've already had too much nebbiolo. Yeah, so that's the the Latour, and there's a... there's a few other cheeses that come from actually that region and that same producer. There's one called Brunette that we carry that's 100% goat's milk. Um, Robiolas are they're they're um, small format, meaning they're smaller cheeses. This this one is half a pound, ten ounces or so. Um, so is the Brunette. Some of the Robiolas can be a little bit bigger, like a pound or so, but they're still yeah. not very very big. Yeah. So like uh, Robiola is just that the way that it's made. Like Brie's are made a certain way. Robiola in Italian. Made yeah, that style, it's that more way. just a more of a mm-hmm. style. It's a mm-hmm. it's a family of cheeses, and there's there's a lot that come from up there. So if you were to if you were to go into a cheese shop in Turin or in you know in, in Barolo, you would see a lot of these types of cheeses. Yeah. Maybe not the Latour, but something similar. Mm. But it's um, good. Did you taste it? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I, did. I, did. I think it's goaty. Did you? I do. I always get I always get goat on the finish mm-hmm. of the Latour. Yeah. Um, but it's it's got a it's nice it's well rounded it, to use another wine term like it's got a balance yeah. got a good balance because the the sheep and the in the cow's milk which are more fatty it gives it more body and, mm-hmm. and structure. <laughs> I feel Rob that it's like the cup because it's in a cupcake shape and uh-huh. form like in a cupcake. Um, it's also in a paper. It's a yeah. cupcake holder. You have to be careful not to eat the paper. <laughs> yeah, because it sticks and it's bad. But I think you should top it with pistachio cream. Oh, like that's you a know good how you would top um, a cupcake with frosting. Yeah. Or you could top that with chocolate, which we've done before, you guys. Yeah. Chocolate shavings over the Latour, delicious with mm-hmm. honey, because then the honey makes it stick, and then the chocolate over the Latour, and I think a hazelnut as well. This one is dipped in there, so I'm going to take that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The um, I was going to talk about there's, there's a really famous cheese from from Piedmont that we rarely get I've only seen it a couple times it's called Castle Man- Magno or Magno Magno Castel Magno yeah that looks like it's been buried in the dirt for about a hundred years yeah it's like mm-hmm. really crusty scary looking natural <laughs> rind on it but if uh, it's in the window repulsive looking it's very <laughs> yes George it's repulsive the uh, th- then there's one that's protected called Robiola di Rock uh, Roca Varana, Roca Varana, which I've never seen here. Uh-uh, I've never seen that here. But that's like a, a really traditional 
um, cheese there. There's also one called Bra, which mm -hmm. is from the, the town of Bra, where, mm -hmm. where the slow food movement happened. Um, the um, the slow food movement is there, there's a whole it, the, the the people there are so connected to their earth, to the earth, and um, there was um, there's a guy that we visited, and we and I've seen him twice named Silvio. Mm -hmm. That um, I I was looking at sometimes when I'm feeling like down and out, mm -hmm. I'll go look at photos of yeah. Silvio and where he lives. He lives in um, so. We, we do a mix of like visiting, you know, like bigger producers, but also yeah. small right. producers. Mm -hmm. Like some of the producers we go see just make cheese at their home and they just share it with their neighbors. It's not stuff that we import or carry at mm -hmm. Benissimo, but you can, you can see the different types of cheese making. But Silvio, yeah, I mean, when you say his home, you're, don't the animals live in, the, his, in his home with him? Like, so, kind of. So we, the first time I was there, yeah. we took the group, which are now my friends, and mm -hmm. we're we're in the Longue, which is this. And by the way, dig into the Testin Barolo. We'll talk about that in a second. The next cheese, which is the yeah. the one with the, with the wine, the must, must on it. Mm -hmm. Dig into that. Um, but the first time we went to go visit him, we we so we're driving up this kind of like steep hill, or maybe it was a uh, considered a mountain. The fog mm -hmm. is like covering the the top of the the mountain, and it's we're in the Longue, which so east of of Alba. And you know, there's a house every you know every couple acres, um, and uh, so we, we we make a little turn and we go into up to his property, which is just way out, kind of like just like built into this hill. So he's like his house, which he built, was built onto the side of a hill, and you go and you and you walk up and just the view from the front yard. There's a hammock right there, and you're like, wow, this is pretty incredible. Imagine living here. Yeah. So and it's just him. No, it's just him and his family. And his family, sorry. Yeah, his wife, he's got a couple kids, and uh, the kids were, were a little bit older, but out comes this little guy who's probably five foot six. He's got like this kind of long hair. He's, he's wearing like, he's wearing an apron. He's like smoking a little like hand-rolled <laughs> cigarette. He's, um, and he's wearing an, uh, I think he had an Elvis Presley shirt on. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, what <laughs> were you saying? He might have yeah. had a like a the Who shirt. It was, it was some, some musician, yeah. musically. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and he and he comes out and greets us. Doesn't speak a lick of English. Not but a word. Our tour guide, who's another friend, um, our local tour guide, Sandro. They they were buddies, and so he brings us in into his house, gives us a little tour. So his house that he built, like I said, he built it. It's two stories, and it's built onto a hill. It looks like a Hobbit house from Lord of the Rings, <laughs> but it was so cool. Um, with the kitchen had he had built a like a pizza oven. It's all he tiled it himself. There was a, a room where he made cheese, and you can see the cheese aging, kind of like it, in the distance in, in his kitchen. Um, and then you walk upstairs, and mm -hmm. the upstairs is where the sheep live. And the the upstairs is like there, there's just like a little door to the back that lets him out right onto the hill for grazing. And it's like built into his house. But before we got back to where all the sheep were hanging out, there was like a there was another room, and I looked into it, and he had he had all these antiques that he would like refurbish and play with. It was so cool. Yeah. And so he was just the ultimate DIY. Like I like looked at his hands. <laughs> the ultimate DIY. He was the ultimate do-it-yourself. Yeah. Artisan in every sense of the word. Make we, his cheese, garden, grow his food. He grew all. He had a garden. Yeah. He had um, he had dogs that that lived there, and they were friends with the sheep, and they also were truffle hunting dogs. I mean, this guy. It, it was like it was the most idyllic place mm -hmm. in life, and I, to this day, when I think about Silvio, I'm like, he has what I what I want in a lot of Are you dreaming that now? Ways. So this I could happen. Just like you look at, mm -hmm. at Branson, at Richard Branson, and you're like, I, I respect that that person, I respect mm -hmm. that man. There's nothing wrong with looking at people that you admire and, and taking parts, sure. things that they have. And say, oh, I love that, I wanna be that, I wanna do that. Yeah, yeah, why not? Why not, yeah. And so he's always been one of those people for me where I've, and he's and he has inspired and motivated me to to build things, to create, to do things. and, and uh, Clearly, that's what makes him happy. He had, um, and I remember also in his house, he had a vinyl collection. He had all this, like, really, um, it was mostly classic rock, like, mm -hmm. classic American rock. <laughs> the Who and, and uh, you know, Pink Floyd and stuff like that. 
Yeah, that's just really cool. And you just and here you are connected with this guy in this tiny place in Italy. Mm -hmm. And he introduced you to, into his home, his home, yeah. and shared how, how he lives with you in a meal with you. I remember pictures of your yeah. meal that you guys all shared, and then you got to pet his animals and really get to see we, the animals. We mm -hmm. hung out with, with the sheep. We went down. We had um, a little tasting with all of his um, all of his cheeses. His neighbor made olive oil, so he would trade with his neighbors who made um, olive oil and balsamics. And so we had all that stuff. And we sat in this little cottage that he had a separate structure like away from his house but it was um he had tables and everything that you that you need to kind of to host people and uh and then his son comes in and his son was a photographer so his son was sharing all his photography with us and oh. we were just even How though was the he was probably in his early 20s okay mm -hmm. they both the sons were in their 20s but uh just just amazing and and you don't even have to speak the same language to to to, to share that experience um, That's good. I'm Carol, who's one of our, hey, look, again, Carol, um, just loves that, that connection that you yeah. get when you visit just someone's family. And that we, we, we tend to think that that only happens when you go to Italy or mm -hmm. these other places. But, I mean, we can, we can do that here with people, too, and we, we try to do that. And that's kind of what mm -hmm. Venice, what we stand for is come into our homes, come and just see what it's like to be a cheesemonger, see what it's like to mm -hmm. um, live an American life. I love when I have cousins. All my cousins are Germany and Austria. And when they come, it's just, it's fun for me to see, they're also like having a kid, I think. You know, they see America and here through new eyes. You know, we get jaded, we're here all the time. But they think we are so friendly and we open our homes. You know, we're not seeing that just living here, but they feel the same way that when I go, I think the same yeah. there because I'm seeing it through new eyes as well. But yeah. it's nice to share. And that's what Carol's bringing up, the... Um, that sharing and understanding that we people all together have so much in common and uh even though his life silvio's life is so much different than ours mm -hmm. yeah he, well, he, we both share elvis presley what was it elvis presley rolling stone I'm not elvis 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 okay <laughs> that's another episode <laughs> <laughs> no but but uh but i do love music i right. do love food i do love mm -hmm. i do love um you know community bonding over over food and stories i love stories yeah. And so, so um, yeah, we, we, we do have a lot in common and, and uh, you know, like even coming into a Venissimo, it's, it's for, you know, for, the, for us that work there, mm -hmm. a lot of it is, is like is welcoming and, and being proud of what, of what we do and sharing our knowledge and, and, and our love and our passion for, uh, for cheese, food, uh, stories. But, um, you know, I, I had that experience, you know, I grew up in the Bay Area and I oh. remember I used to love... When I first moved to San Diego, I was very um, protective of the Bay Area. I was oh, like, oh, yeah, proud of the Bay Area. The Bay Area is yeah. so great, mm -hmm. and uh, which I, it is. It is great, mm -hmm. but I would, I would take. I, I was sort. I was a little bit like not open to the fact that San Diego is great too. Oh. At first, you were a hater. I think I was kind of a hater. Wow. There's, there's a Northern California, <laughs> Southern California yes, rivalry. That is true, and I was caught up mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. It's a Giants Dodgers thing, you know. <laughs> No, Ooh, what? It was amazing. It's baseball. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so like, I but I would take people up, and I was I would be very proud of my hometown and showing them all these. Yeah. And now, though I, I've been in San Diego longer than I was in the Bay Area, um, I'm very You're proud when people. I am. I'm very proud when people come to San Diego mm -hmm. of showing them our town. Our yes. City. And little gems, little his, bits of history. The the my favorite taco shop, my favorite or my favorite taco truck, the the beach. Like just go to La Jolla and just just drive mm -hmm. around. Yeah. Um, and we have people that come here for for cheese reasons. I mean, we have people who come here for, for business, and yeah. I love to just kind of caravan them around, drive them to all the different shops, and point things out, yeah. and, and just be be proud of of, mm -hmm. of what we have going on here. There are so many cool things everywhere, right? Yeah, and um, just seeing those and pointing them out is a good thing, and sharing them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think so. And I, I, when I have my friends from you know places where the weather isn't so so nice, I'm like, look, it's this. It's like this every day. Seventy five degrees in sun. <laughs> January. In January. You know. <laughs> yeah. Jealous so, so much? Good. Yeah. But don't move here, please. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want more traffic. <laughs> you moved here. It's true. This is home now. I, I mean, I'm never leaving. So. Okay. Okay. Testun Barolo. Ooh, Testun Barolo. So let's do this. I haven't had this for a long time, Rob. Me neither. So, very good. I haven't mm -hmm. seen this cheese for a long time. Did mm -hmm. we order this for this class? Was that why we ordered this? Mm -hmm. or did we for holidays. It? Yeah. Because um, 
Holidays has all mm. the wild cheeses, things dipped in a very wine whiny. west. Mm -hmm. It's very whiny. It's very grapey. Mm. Um, this is to me like a, this is the closest, Italians are not known for cheddars. What, mm. what is an Italian cheddar? I don't know one. No. No. Um, but this one kind of reminds me texturally of a cheddar. Oh, it's, it, it, mm -hmm. so, I know from tasting it mm -hmm. that it's made in the same way. I bet mm -hmm. you they use, they do the cheddaring process, mm -hmm. which is, oh, it, which is a mm -hmm. technique in the make process. I'm so hungry. <laughs> He's I know. talking because I'm eating. I have to um, <laughs> use some self control right right now. You? I am hungry too. I know. <laughs> but wait till the time. camera's off. I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> so, um, the um, Testin Barolo, the word um, Testin means hard head. Oh, I didn't know that. It's a hard testing. cheese. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a whole family of these. They, they've been made by the same cheese maker in you know Barolo area since the 70s, I believe. I want to say mid 70s. But there's one that is wrapped in chestnut leaves. There's one. There, yes. there, there's um, a the few Castagno. different ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a few different ones with um, where they introduce other other things on, on the rind. Um, so this is the Barolo must cheese, and it, is it mixed milk as well? Uh, it, no, it's cow. That's cow. cow. No, it's cow and sheep. And sheep. Yeah. Today yeah. it was interesting when we pulled together the tasting how many of them were mixed milk, mm -hmm. and that's very cool. Like purists will say you can't mm. mix the milk, but on the flip side, you can say. You're not letting any milk go to waste, right? If you don't have enough milk of the goat to make enough cheese, you're going to share it with the, the sheep and the cow and no. make a good cheese. It's delicious. I I love that. I it's think sweet. mixing the milk is really cool. I mean, mm -hmm. would, a, would a purist say that sh you can't blend grapes in champagne? No. Yeah. A, a, purist, <laughs> a purist says you have to blend grapes. I mean, come on. The uh, But that's what, that's what gives so much um, diversity, too. I mean, yeah. when you can mix and match... Uh, milks. I think that's that's the, mm -hmm. the fun of it. I mean, sometimes I, I believe sometimes the testoon is also made with with goat's milk. So mm -hmm. this one is just cow and sheep, but they mm -hmm. can do lots of variations on it. Well, it's like wines. You have varietals that are blends. Yeah, exactly. A meritage, you know, a blend of this, blend of that. They're so similar, you know. In Super ways. Tuscan, yeah. or, or those are blends. I mean, Bordeaux exactly. are often blends. blends. Mm -hmm. um, it's bringing grapes together. It's bringing worlds together. It's yeah. bringing milks together. Yeah, there, that's, there's so many similarities, and you yeah. know, when you when you discuss um, similarities between um, cheeses and wines, I think one of the big similarities is that idea of blending. Another one is the idea of aging. Um, so that's where uh, that, that's why cheese pairs so well with a wine like a Barolo, or I mean like a Nebbiolo that can have some age on it because age is where the, the wine gets all of its complexity mm -hmm. and the same thing with, with cheese. Um, and, and you know, they can go from anywhere from a few weeks, um, like the Latour, to a few years. Um, and uh, of all of these that we have, the Testin Barolo is the oldest one. Um, I think so. Yeah, today we had lots of young things yeah, on these the are plate. So that's definitely the aged, aged guy on the girl on the plate. Yeah, <laughs> it's aged. 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 We have to go to Boschetto. Have we only done those two? No, let's do um, Gorgonzola. Okay. Next. Okay. <laughs> and and by the way, for you guys at home, you can yeah. obviously. It's no no problem if you've already yes. gone ahead. Yeah. Because you people, I have comments, but I will wait and hold my comments. But Rob, you know what I'm going to do with the gorgonzola dolce? My favorite thing. And that's to use the apricot. Because we were, um, this is a, a common thing around the world. So of course an Italian thing to do the gorgonzola dolce with apricot. Mm. But we were in a teeny little cheese shop in a basement in Melbourne, Australia. Mm. Pretty far away from Italy, right? Mm -hmm. And they sold just like the fresh apricots and they had cored out, you know, taken the pit out of the center, filled the center with gorgonzola dolce. Is that not the... Best greatest thing too, and I actually got a hazelnut on top right. with it. That's a killer bite, right? And did this count as my fruit for the day, right? <laughs> I'm trying to get a fruit into every. Oh, this always counts. <laughs> well, then I'm getting I'm getting a plenty of fruits. <laughs> Thank you, Rob, for pointing that out. <laughs> yeah, gorgonzola dolce. A lot of times you'll see the dolce. They'll have the the wheel and they'll they might cut it in half horizontally, and then they'll take a spoon or something like a big spoon and they'll just and they'll just scoop out of the top of it and i've seen where they even leave it out of the case so it can, so it really softens up and then they'll just plop out like a as if a, you remember when they served orphan oliver the his porridge <laughs> <laughs> and charles dickens mm -hmm. like they'll just scoop out the gorgon's old old shape throw it in a little bucket how much do you want yes Half pound, good close enough into a tub yeah. yeah because it's so mushy and runny yeah this could just be 
a sauce on its own. You could heat that up and make a sauce without doing anything else to this. Yeah. Because it's so creamy and rich. You don't have to add anything. In Gorgonzola, so Gorgonzola is the name of a town. There's like Barolo is the name of a town. Gorgonzola is just outside of Milan, which is in Lombardy. They, um, they make a, a firmer version, which is called, usually called Picanti, which means spicy. It's not really spicy, but it's, it's a firmer, a uh, little bit stronger Gorgonzola. And then they have this one, which is called Dolce, but it's not really sweet. It's more soft. And soft cream. The sweet cream creamy. is why I think they get the Dolce part. Because mm -hmm. anything you, when you have a dessert or something and it's Dolce, mm -hmm. is they've added sweet cream. And that's what, yeah. Yeah, I guess they're, the they're, sweet, it, the it's a subtle sweetness. Mm -hmm. Anytime, um, you know, the cheese descriptors, when we say, like, even when we say Goudas are sweet, it's not sweet like a cheesecake sweet, but yeah. it's, it, it's got a little butterscotchiness mm -hmm. to it. Did you like that with that from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love this one. But these are in the really general blue category. These, it's a blue cheese from Gorgonzola, and it, it's a it's a classic. They go, the the there's another style of cheese which are called um, strachino. If, mm -hmm. if anyone's heard that term, um, strachino is. Um, you know, sometimes people will come in and, and ask for a strachino because they've seen something labeled strachino, mm -hmm. and but it could be very different. They can be very different cheeses. What what that means is tired cows. Straka means means tired. Straka is tired. Okay, tired and, cows. And so um, where where Gorgonzola is, you know, near near Milan, it's at the foothill, and so. Um, the animals will come down from the Alps and they will be tired and they give a very rich milk when they're tired. Mm. And so strachinos are anything made with that really rich milk from tired cows. They can be blues, they can be other softies, they can be even firmer cheeses, but they are, they're all considered strachino. So it's a mm. kind of a confusing term, but this is a strachino cheese. Um, so the tired cows made this. Yeah. Do you feel sad for the tiny cows? No, I think those are these are happy cows. So. I, think it's, <laughs> a re I think it's a relief for okay. the cows. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, from tired. Tired such a sad word, but tired can be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, tired. No, tired's good. Tired's good. Tired. Tired's good. The, the cow parade. Can we talk about that? Mm -hmm. The cows coming down from the Alps. You guys, you've never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. um, I think our most popular video on our YouTube channel, honestly, is the cow parade. Yeah. And I call it the cow parade because it's just in this fall season when they come down for the winter from high in the Alps. With their bells on, and all you hear are the bells. Mm -hmm. It's music. The quiet of the city. The no, sound of city. music. The sound of music. <laughs> that the true sound of music. Those tired cows are probably making delicious strachino. Then you're saying. Yeah, like, I after mean, they've trekked on down. Well, Remember I, our hike and the yeah, cows? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, um, yeah, we 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 hiked up. I don't know how. How, you how? have the screenshot from it. <laughs> of we our did steps, you mean? 300 and some stories we <laughs> hiked, right? That's yeah. what your little app said. And then we rewarded ourselves at the top. We did. We did lots of yummy <laughs> things. <laughs> but the, um, so what they do is they march the, the animals up the, up the mountain and they, they'll get up to, you know, thousands of feet. And uh, so they're, but they're, the diet is incredible when the, as they're, as they're oh, marching. The grasses, the green grasses and dandelions and flowers. Yeah. Bushes. I mean, they're everything. It's, and mm -hmm. the, the funniest thing about the, the march is as they go through certain towns, there's like a little um, string that is like the, um, they all, there's a tiny little string, right? Oh, it, and that's a, the barrier. A toddler could bust through this barrier. Oh yeah, I mean they could just go like this and go under it. Oh, they, they could just walk right. <laughs> they could walk it. right through it. Yeah, but, but they they, they obey this little tiny string yes. that is their you know their their this Iowa way. Five hundred pound cow mm -hmm. won't get near the string. It's so funny and it's cute. Funny. It's great, but it's beautiful. Something to see everyone perhaps in the fall. But when they can. yeah, but when they but when they come down, they are not only tired and kind of dehydrated. Um, but they also have just been eating all this amazing food, which also contributes mm -hmm. to, to them producing yeah. good milk. Um, that is great. Um, we have one person, Brenda, on the call. So, Rob, today mm -hmm. we're talking about just blue cheeses. Mm -hmm. Gorg ever, most people got Gorgonzola Dolce, but she picked up in Del Mar mm -hmm. and they made an extra plate today okay. using the Cambazola Black. Mm -hmm. And you know what, Brenda? They're super similar. So, Cambazola Black is actually. Germany's version of gorgonzola dolce yeah. because they add cream to mm -hmm. the to that cheese. 
So it's as similar as it can be. The Camazola black, you've got a black rind on it. That's They call it that because they age it in the cave and it develops this kind of blackish rind, which the Dolce doesn't have. So that's kind of the only difference. But really, again, those are Bavarian cows coming down, giving the milk, and they add the cream. The Gorgonzola Dolce, Italian cows. Yeah. It's, <laughs> coming it's down, they add Bavaria, the cream. so it's, it's yeah. Alpine, it's cow's uh -huh. milk. The, the name itself, Camazola, is a mix of camembert and gorgonzola cambazola and the camembert part is the creamy part so that's more of like a french brie so it's a, it's a creamy blue but same idea um and it's uh, it's about as close as you can get to the gorgonzola dolce so it's another good one um, yes a good uh, substitute which our friend with our, which our wonderful mama moliterna monger monger came up with she's like <laughs> oh i'm gonna give her and she all i think brenda you also had la Grenne on your cheese plate oh nice Oh, so which is so that was a fun one because you had La Grenne, which was a cheese that was washed in La Grenne wine, mm -hmm. versus we have the cheese that was um, in the grape must. So very, very similar. You can see similarities between all of these. The La Grenne mm -hmm. is also northern Italian. It's cow's milk, mm -hmm. and it has a little garlic. Uh, infusion as well, mm -hmm. so you can really taste the garlic. I have a wedge of that at home right now. Do you? Now, I to love Lagrange. Be honest, yeah. But there's very few that I don't love. This is. <laughs> Speaking of garlic, that kind of leads into the next one because mm -hmm. it the, it doesn't have garlic in it, but to me it had it is garlicky. Yes. Um, it, it tastes garlicky, mm -hmm. and that is the boschetto. Hands off! These are all mine. <laughs> <laughs> well. Boschetto. Can we talk about Boschetto? Many stories about Boschetto. And our friend George mm -hmm. says this is his favorite. Mm. And can I tell you, George, uh, we all have cheese titles in the shop. And remember back when we would actually try to wear like little name tags with our cheese titles? <laughs> and everybody gets to pick a title based on their favorite cheese. Okay, Rob, we'll just get to him in a minute. He's had many titles. I'm not sure what his title is today. But my title, almost now and always forever, is the Baroness of Boschetto because I love this cheese. I'm a truffle fanatic. When I said I could be a truffle pig or dog to sniff them out, it could be because I adore the <laughs> truffle. This morning with breakfast, mm -hmm. my breakfast was a hard-boiled egg with truffle salt. Wow. That's, I could eat that impressive. every day. Impressive. Mm -hmm. Very impressive. I'm very, it's very posh. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're fancy. But I love Boschetto. White truffles. Talk about the white versus the black. And mm -hmm. you went to a truffle shop or a truffle farm? Yeah, they call... Mm -hmm. they, so, I think I mentioned this, but the, the town of Alba is... Um, it's really where... They, they have probably the most famous, the, the biggest truffle market in, in the world. And, it, you know, it happens during truffle season, which is November, October, November. And uh, they, they gather all the, the truffles from around the region from outside of uh, the town of Alba. They, they come from around the countryside uh, of, of Alba. So some of the places that I just mentioned, yeah. like where, where Silvio lives, you mm -hmm. know, that area. And, uh, but there's there's like 200 types of, of truffle. 200? There's a lot of different types of truffle. Mm -hmm. Most of them are not really the, the fancy expensive ones. But the there's a, mm -hmm. there's a couple that are really well known and it's the, the winter black truffle mm -hmm. and the winter white truffle. The winter black truffle is more common. You um, there, there's a lot that come from uh, Umbria and southern Italy, you know, and also all over France and some other places. The winter white truffle is the one that is way more rare, mm -hmm. and it, most of it is comes from around Alba. It's also known as the Alba truffle. Yeah, the Alba truffle. That's the is that the diamond of all truffles? Yeah. So because um, truffles are the diamonds of the earth, mm -hmm. but amongst truffles. Is that the diamond? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. those, those are the elusive, the expensive. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that are highly valued because they're super aromatic and they cannot be cultivated. Um, so black truffles, they some mm -hmm. some companies and people have had success cultivating black truffle. White truffle, nobody knows how to no. make them grow. Isn't it funny? So, people would love to have truffle farms, but it can't, can't be done. Oregon, though, has tried, but it's black truffles that they're doing there. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, so they grow symbiotically mm -hmm. with tree roots. They grow underground and Isn't it's, it under some hazelnut trees? Uh, so, or is, oh, sometimes, yeah. It's, it's, it's not a particular okay. type of tree, mm -hmm. but they do grow with hazelnuts, beech. There, a lot of them grow with oak, um, yeah. and, uh, but they, they grow underground. So as Gino was saying, they do use dogs and pigs. But tell them why they use dog. It's dogs more now. It's dog. Well, mm -hmm. it's only dogs now. They used to use pigs <laughs> because pigs actually have better noses than dogs. Mm -hmm. But pigs also could not be trained <laughs> to, to not, not eat, eat the truffle. 
So they, uh, so the pigs would, would would mess up these hot spots where the truffles would grow, and then they wouldn't grow there the next year, and they would just they would and they would eat them. the reward. and then they would eat them. Yeah. <laughs> So the the um, we 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 went to a truffle market and then we've um, we didn't go truffle hunting but we had some some truffle lectures from the, the tour guides there and they would explain that the the dogs um, are they have to like to play the game so they have to um, it, it so it's not a particular breed of dog either but uh, they have to to you know be well behaved I guess so that they can. They can gently kind of tell the owner where you know where the truffles are, and then the owner will, will will gently dig them up. And sometimes they go on to you know strangers' property; they'll they'll trespass. And, uh, <laughs> to get the, and that could be like, ooh. But the but the winter white they're truffles valuable. they're it's very valuable. valuable. When when mm-hmm. you get the bigger and the and the more high quality the actual the truffle itself, they can go for up to three thousand dollars a pound. Um, you know, d- depending on the year, but they, they go from yeah. between a couple thousand to, to three thousand dollars a pound. So we're talking, and, and white truffles are not to be cooked, they're more used as finishing. Yes. Oh, and this is a big tip I, I, never cook them because then the flavor dissipates, yeah, it goes away. That's why you they always shave them French, they'll at wait the end of them, yep, mm-hmm. they'll wait till the yeah. pasta dish comes out and then they'll usually shave them. And, in front of you, um, black truffles can be cooked, and the, they'll keep a lot of the uh, aroma. But white truffles, you're, you're not; to, they're they're just to finish uh, dishes. And you'll see them on risottos, pastas. But you can I mean you can put it on anything, and it's going to be delicious. Yeah, it's too good. Truffles, I, I just to me, you know, they talk about like oysters or aphrodisiacs or I don't know that just get you happy. To me, it's truffle. And yeah. it can be, I mean, just, I like truffle oil, I love truffle salt, I love truffle cheese, anything truffle. Well, <laughs> truffles were really popular a couple thousand years ago. And then um, during Middle Ages, when, when you know, Christianity was spreading all across mm-hmm. Northern Europe, um, they were, were sort of like, that's this reputation for being an aphrodisiac. And yeah. We couldn't have that. We couldn't have, you know, that was, <laughs> oh, no, no, we no, can't no. have that. So, so they were kind of like... They, they they became less popular for many what? years until crazy. until Louis the Fourteenth, who was a pretty opulent guy. Mm-hmm. He I mean I think he died of gout because he just ate and drank <laughs> everything. He was uh, I mean that's what led to the French Revolution, right? Like mm-hmm. to the Louis the Sixteenth. But so these guys were were just gorging themselves, and he loved truffles, and he kind of so the Sun King Louis Fourteen yeah. brought truffles back and then there was another guy who um, was around a couple hundred years later after truffles became popular again and his name was Briat Savarin mm-hmm. and he was a he was like the French isn't he called a gastronomist yeah I was gonna say he's mm-hmm. kind of like the French um, Anthony Bourdain of the 18th century that's true that's you a know? good way to put him yeah he Briat was like Savarin. a he was a, an early foodie Yes. And he wrote, uh, even though people hate that term, foodie. Foodie, I know. Yeah. But if you love food, I guess you're a foodie. He wrote a book called The Physiology of Taste, which mm-hmm. is still, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's a Penguin classic. But he, um, he, call, he loved truffles, and he called truffles the diamond of the earth. That's yes. his quote. Oh, that's his. Yeah. Because I'd heard that it did not uh-huh. uh, equate it to him. Yeah. So that's good because I agree with him. Mm-hmm. It's the diamond of the earth. He said, oh. he said I think he also said something like, you tell me what you are, or you tell me what you eat, and I'll tell you what you are. Mm-hmm. Something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Which I say that all the time. I always say, you are what you eat. I am yeah. cheesy then. Yeah, we're, we're just a block of cheese, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> you're, you're cheese, or a wine-soaked cheese. That's pretty much what you're made of. <laughs> <laughs> you wine-soaked cheese? Wine-soaked cheese. That is mean. Raw wow. wine-soaked cheese. I think that's nice. I you would. know, but I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down happy. Eating cheese, drinking wine. I mean, Absolutely. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, it's, yeah. I think it's pretty good. Life um, is good. We were talking about and all the pairings. Everybody's having fun with the pairings. Uh-huh. And um, okay. these are big flavors. These, these are, are really big. big flavors. So I just did the haze, the pistachio, so pistachio cream with the gorgonzola dolce. I love that. You guys try it. Carol, our friend Carol, loves it with the hazelnuts, and I'm with you there. Mm. I did actually. The gorgonzola dolce with the pistachio cream and a hazelnut on the cracker. Oh my gosh, that should be a cookie. That's I'm a gonna cookie. make a cookie out of this. Yeah, I was gonna say. Wouldn't that be delicious it. altogether? That Gina, would be a super, super cookie. If you now, can dream it, you can do it. 
Yes, Robert G. <laughs> if you can, you can. Dream about that cookie. Now try boschetto with the with the pistachio. So Rob, while we're talking, because everybody's got their flavors. Okay. Um, where we can get white truffles? This is tricky, um, Brenda. Where to get white truffles around here? White truffles are only seasonal, and that's the fall. Like October-ish is peak truffle season overall. Uh, we don't ever carry the fresh truffles. They're so expensive and hard to get. But Specialty Produce, if you know them, they are our best importer of all things grown around the world. Um, they typically have fresh white truffles um, in the fall. We've missed it for this season. Mm -hmm. I don't, they don't have them right now. But next year, put it on your calendar to check uh, back with Specialty Produce about September and see where the situation is about fresh white truffles. Otherwise, you just have to eat white truffles in Boschetto or... Um, or, or you yeah. can, some, some of the restaurants mm -hmm. will get them if you go to the fancy restaurants, like mm -hmm. try some of the nicer Italian places in Little Italy, like um, yeah. oh. Ben Cotto. Or ben Cotto does it, uh, Solare, yeah, in, Solare. Uh, Solare does it in Liberty Station. Liberty Station. Uh -huh you might get some fresh white truffles there. They're very elusive. Yeah. So a lot of people are loving the boschetto with hazelnuts. Did you try it? I did, yeah, it was and fun. It was interesting. Also? I like the finish. I like the nice balance with the sweet. I, yeah. I tried it with a, I tried the boschetto with the pistachio. Oh, okay. And it's good. Yeah. And with the hazelnut too? Well, nuts with anything is yum, yum, yum. Mm -hmm. um, I had just been chatting with people because our friend Carol talked about this um, pasta called, and Italians are known for pasta, uh -huh. so. Yeah, crozette. It's probably crozet in French. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's a buckwheat pasta, and I, I had to order it on Amazon because you just can't find it easy. Um, but she introduced me to this. Try this out. Check it out. So I'm going to um, a little square-shaped pasta. Did we talk about this in a, a couple classes? Ago? Yes, yeah. exactly. That's when it came up the first time. Yeah. I've never tried it, Rob, but I have it. I'm going to try it. Um, but what I learned is that it's kind of, it's buckwheat, so it's a pasta instead of made with a, a flour, regular mm -hmm. flour, a wheat-based flour, buckwheat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But a little square shape. Wasn't he the like character on Little Rascals? Buckwheat. He was. <laughs> buckwheat. How old are you? You're way older than me. Well, didn't Eddie Murphy do a buckwheat thing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Remember that? It was so good. Um, That's what I think So, about. but, the, back to the pasta. The, like I said, I saw some recipe. It's from the Savoie region of France is where it yeah. is most famous and where it originates. But um, it's kind of like uh, you can bake it with ham and cheese. But I'm from Austria, and their version of it to me is the Spätzle. Yeah. Yeah, Spätzle. Some people say Spätzle, Spätzle. It's so Austria good. and Germany's version of pasta is called Spätzle. Savoie, obviously, their version is these Crozet, Crozettes, Crozet. Um, but I'm going to bake it, Rob. I'm going to use uh, the Alpenhorn, mm -hmm. which is a uh, Alpine. Yeah, like a Gruyere. You can use a Conte. You can yeah. use Gruyere. In Savoie, they use Conte. Um, I'm going to do it with that and bacon. The recipes I've seen have been with Conte and ham, but I'm going to do Alpenhorn and bacon that sounds amazing. with the crozet. So let you know how it goes. But you can order it on Amazon. C-R-O-Z-E-T uh, is what it is. But this was from, this is what we learned. This is what getting together, even though we're getting together, right. just chatting randomly like this. It's an we're learning these things, exchange of, of ideas, ideas and, and fun things. Yeah. yeah. Okay, George likes um, boschetto with rosemary. Would you try that? Nobody, we haven't even tried the rosemary today. Try yeah, that. I've never that tried that, George, great. so I will try that too. Brenda loves the boschetto so much. Yeah, boschetto is the winner, I think, <laughs> because I got to say, and Brenda, you're right, the uh, truffle noir is also you enjoy. That's very good. The boschetto is a very intense, a different truffle flavor than some of the other truffle cheeses mm -hmm. we have. Moliterno is one example. That is black truffle shavings. That comes from southern Italy. Mm -hmm. Completely different truffle flavor. To me, this is more garlicky side of truffles, yeah. where that one's more mushroomy side of truffles. Truffles yeah. are elusive flavor-wise, mm -hmm. truffly or garlic. Yeah. I feel that men typically say garlic and women say mushroom, but <laughs> it's just my theory. I mm -hmm. get, I just get like a very, uh, I, this is going to sound weird, but... <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm not saying a word. Sometimes I kind of get like a little bit of like a lighter fluid thing. Out of truffle? <laughs> not this one. No, you do not. But I don't mean that in a bad way. And I well, it's just like so tar weird. in wine. Yeah. It's good. Lighter fluid in I get a lighter fluidy thing. Lighter fluid? We should write that on the sign, like lighter fluidy. <laughs> and what, what, one, why are you drinking or eating lighter fluid? Oh, you've never had lighter fluid? <laughs> I have it's not. Good. It's delicious. How was it with the rosemary? <laughs> it's good. 
So I had um, the rosemary on the boschetto, and then oh my god, and then I had a grape right afterwards. And mm -hmm. like weirdly, the grape when I had it, the burst all it tasted like a like a rosemary infused grape because it was like the the taste was still in my mouth. It was good. Mm. The boschetto with rosemary is phenomenal. Good tip, um, George. See, this is where. I wouldn't have put those two together, mm -hmm. and here they did, and now we know something new that we just absolutely love. And again, I'm making cookies out of some of these. Combos. I love it. The Italian food. I mean, this is all Italian. We went all Italian today with the wine, our little Nebbiolo. Everything was, mm -hmm. well, for the most part, it was all Northern Italian. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the Boschetto is, is from the Florence, the south. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but the, the truffle is from the North. Yep. Um, so it was very, mm -hmm. very region specific. Mm -hmm. Well, the pistachio, I guess, is from Sicily, you said, right? Uh, pistachio, yeah, that one's Sicilian. They're known for their pistachios. Remember that? Going to That's the right. pistachio farms yep. and seeing how they grow the pistachios. Did you know those trees are male and female? I, when I, you go through that, remember that? You didn't know that before. You didn't. No, I didn't know before. <laughs> Why would I know? I don't know, but you know. <laughs> anyway, and they they don't grow every year. I mean, it's a finicky tree. This is why pistachios yeah. are so expensive. Yeah. We can learn. There's a whole art and they have to, like imagine how many yeah. years it took them to figure that yes. out. They have to like stagger the planting. It's oh really yeah, exactly. It's fascinating. So the cream is not cheap, and but it's delicious. Mm -hmm. And um, I loved it with the Testun Barolo, the Latour and the Dolce. I did not try the pistachio cream with Boschetto, but I'll try that I tried next. that, it was good. It's okay. there's a moment of like it was a little bit I was like what direction is this going but then it finished nicely okay <laughs> for me nothing today made me go ooh that's kind of odd I love them all together I want to thank everyone for being with us we're babbled on for like an hour and ten minutes oh, normally we're good long. at the hour thank you all our next wine so much we Rob do we know it. what the next um theme we, was? I believe we're doing Chardonnay, is it Chardonnay California Chardonnay oh California Chardonnay which and that also yes California Chardonnay so that's a tough one you guys wait wait hold on was mm. it Chardonnay or was it um we may have changed it Gina to, we did to Tell like me. a um Gewurztraminer or something okay um, let's give a quick looky see while we are here and before but we it's move on. Two weeks from today. Yeah. Which would be In the twenty seventh. Twenty seventh. And no Chardonnay. We that. So okay. it is California Chardonnay, you guys. I am going to tell you right now, I'm typically not a fan. But so but I wanna not I wanna give it a chance because yeah, you know be better. I yeah. So we're gonna give it a chance and we're gonna see because it's a hard wine to pair with cheeses. But we're going to find the good ones. We should um, do uh, California cheeses, right? We're going to do California. Yeah, yeah. Of course. We'll do California cheeses, of which there are many. Mm -hmm. And here was an idea that came up, and I've added it to the list, Carol. Um, we're going to do a virtual tour, you guys, because we have visited so many American USA cheesemakers. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do some virtual tasting and, and show you around, tell you stories of some of the places we've been um, in the U.S. that make great cheese. Because we make great cheeses as well, um, just different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, it's all fun. I look forward to it. Yeah. Lots of uh, trips to Northern California, uh -huh. a couple trips to Wisconsin. 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 Yeah, I've been to a in Colorado. I mean, there's and the Pacific Northwest. Right. Um, it's crazy. Vermont. Vermont, yeah. I mean, I've, so many I've been. Uh, I've made cheese um, in New York City before. Mm -hmm. At uh, Beecher's. Beecher's. And Union Square, Beecher's is. Imagine this. A cheesemaker mm. in Union Square. And you made cheese there. I made it in Seattle. You made it in... Yeah, it was the same company that's based yeah. in Seattle in Pike's Place. They have a they have a facility in, New York, in Midtown Manhattan. That's crazy. Making cheese. Yeah. Pretty cool, right? It's very cool. Yeah. But, so uh, uh, we could share that. You've got some video. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get all high tech, you guys, coming up. Watch. With photos. Some yeah, of our videos. Of our game. tours. You know, we're going to show you all of our slideshows from our old vacations. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it'll be really good. But we want to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, I've been on the computer way too much, and I've had too much wine. My theory, Rob, remember the last time I said I was going to use the small glasses so that I would drink less wine? The theory doesn't work if you just keep pouring into the small glass, but I'll keep trying. Somehow the bottle always ends up yeah. empty, but that's okay. And um, say hi to Jason, John, George, Carol, Brenda. John, we had so many people today and commenting. Thanks for the feedback because it's fun to answer the questions. Um, and just try to have fun together until we can be together. And someday when we can be together, we're going to have a great party. Yeah. We're just inviting you all for a cheese feast. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do that. So, um, 
Oh, and then Brenda, uh, nuts in the chocolates. Did we have chocolates? Did you get, Brenda, I'm not sure. You had, There was a question about nuts in the chocolates. Oh, um, yeah, I bet you Delmar put a chocolate on hers. And I'm not but, sure, Brenda, Brenda what chocolate got... she put on there, so I cannot answer your question. Not sure on that. Um, I apologize. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. it was delicious, though. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but be careful. Um, so, everyone, more classes to come. Hopefully see you at the Night of Chardonnay. Yeah, in a couple uh, weeks. In a couple weeks. And in the meantime... Well, uh, and then should we mention, there's a, are we doing a cooking class on maybe the 24th on a Sunday? Yeah, Nate. You know what he called it? Uh, Supid. <laughs> Supid good. Supid good. Grilled cheese. He's going to make the best grilled cheese sandwich using sourdough. <laughs> And the best tomato soup, hence the super good grilled cheese. Uh, it's going to be delicious on the 24th. On yeah, the 24th. if you want to cook. Yeah, yeah, he's going to just cook something up. I just love to watch the cooking. I just love to eat it. I yeah. just come and eat. I know you do. <laughs> you do. So. Like, talk about it. fun job. <laughs> Easy. Uh, oh, and Donna. Yay. Thank you, Donna. Hey, everyone. Donna. I mean, I hope I recognized everyone. So thank you. Good night. Well, arrivederci. Wow. In Italian, we say arrivederci. And see you next time. Until then, more wine. Yeah, good night. <laughs> A bonan